Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome everyone to a random moment unfiltered with Pastor David. Uh, Pastor, as, as everybody knows, on Tuesdays we talk about current events that are going on um, that are making headlines. And on Thursdays, uh, I like to ask you questions that pertain to either the study you just taught on Wednesday evening or things pertaining to the truth, uh, God's word. And so today uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, a situation that happened. Uh, a gentleman came and saw me yesterday at the church and, and he was really discouraged about his life not pleasing to God. And he was going on to tell me that even some of his family members have saying, well, you're a Christian, but you're so down, where's the joy? Last night in your study, as we went through Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, uh, it, the, the study was amazing, and, it, and you shared about God's exceeding grace. And how does one reconcile the idea of, i got to do these things for God in order for Him to be happy for me, and then living in His grace that's exceeding, where even at the 10th verse He says, we are His workmanship. You know, the, um, the entire Christian life is, is built on the fact that God has shown his mercy, his compassion, his grace, his forgiveness. He has shown us this in the giving of his son, Jesus Christ. I mean, to believe in the gospel message, the message that speaks concerning what God has done, how God has done this, and who he did this through, to see that God has sent his son, that Jesus has died on a cross, and Jesus has, has carried upon himself my sin and then has, as a result of that, um, granted to me by his grace and, and uh, through faith in the gospel message and trust in him, he's given to me a, a complete forgiveness of my sins and, and has ushered me into his presence and has, and has settled uh, my debt and has made it very clear that that it is already uh, considered by God to be a reality that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All of these things are intended to awaken us to the reality of the great mercy and depth of love and infinite grace that he has towards us. And so when we grasp hold of that by faith, when we come to realize that uh, nothing shall separate me from the love of God, when we realize these things and they're not based on any efforts that I have put into it, but by my my reception of, of a promise that he's given and, and to take to heart the gift that has been uh, granted to me through Christ. Well, that ought to be the, the uh, catalyst of, of removing the burdens that I carry, the self-blame that I have in terms of uh, I'm so bad, nothing ever good will ever happen to me, and it's because I'm so bad. Uh, those things are, are to be washed away by the reality of the love of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the forgiveness of God, uh, the tremendous grace of God, all of those things, when understood, uh, set us free, you know, because uh, the one who has been set free from, by Jesus, is, he said, is free indeed. And so we have freedom in Christ to uh, be, one, freed from the shackles of the chains of the sins that bound us, and two, freedom to live for Christ and enjoy the world as he has given to us, the pleasures and blessings that he has given to us, us through Jesus with the hope of eternity in heaven. And so uh, the, the thing that I think that causes chains of bondage to uh, to fall off is when we understand that there's not a single thing I've ever done, but that it's all because of what he did. And then to, to begin to actually receive and believe the incredible love that God has for such a worm as I that causes us to say, uh, bless God, I'm forgiven, and in Christ I'm a new creation. And that's what I was trying to to convey as I went through the study last night in, in Ephesians 2, is that it's by grace that we've been saved through faith. And like you said, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast, yeah. lest we should brag about how we saved ourselves, whatever efforts we might have put into our own salvation. No, it's, it's when we have rested in and trusted in uh, the Lord and the humility that comes as a, a result of being aware 
of what he's done and, and, and who we are. And when we come to realize that the only thing I added to my own salvation is the sins that he has forgiven me of, when I trust him and, and believe what he has said is true, um, then that burden rolls off and, and I have the ability to have joy, the joy of the Lord, which is my strength and the joy of the Lord, which comes through the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And, um, and I, I know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. No, no matter what I go through, I'm never alone. And uh, he is always with me. He never, never leaves me, never forsakes me. So that gives to me a, a confidence uh, as well as the courage to live. Amen. And you know, as you're talking about his grace, you know, the chapter opened up last night with we were once in darkness uh, and now we're considered his workmanship. Yeah. Oh, and, and that's what a poem. That's a poem. The poema, it's his creative work of art. And he has created us in, he's, he says, in order that we might perform the works that he has before ordained that we should walk in. The, uh, the evidence of our salvation is found in a variety of things. You know, obviously, the mark of the Christian is love, but he's also known, or she is also known, by their works. You know, the things that they do demonstrate what they believe. You know, even a child is known by his works, whether he is good or evil. You know, your works demonstrate your character. They demonstrate who you truly are. And so God has, uh, has ordained that we should walk in good works, things that demonstrate that uh, that we have been saved, you know, it's not the works that save us. It's the works that demonstrate that we've been saved, you know. So there are numbers of people who say, oh, I know Jesus, but they don't, they don't live in good works because, in fact, they really don't know Jesus. When you, when you come to know the Lord, uh, there's a transformation that becomes evident. People begin to see your good works, and like Jesus said, and they'll glorify your Father who's in heaven. So your good works demonstrate the reality of your salvation and God has ordained that we who follow him who is a good God should also be walking in good works. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that, Pastor. And because last night, I mean, you guys, if you're not coming on Wednesday evenings, you guys got to come. This last night's study was just so, because the contrast of we were dead in trespasses and we walked according to the course of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air and and the sons of disobedience, but God, mm -hmm. you know, and then now we're considered his poem. His workmanship, yes. Through God's amazing grace. Yes. And so it's just, it, it's mind boggling. So thank you, Pastor, for sharing that. And because I know there's a, there can be a struggle, like I gotta do these things for Christ. I gotta do this, I gotta do that. But when Jesus says it's a gift of God. Let's... It's different when you say I get to rather than I've got to. I got to, yes. You know, I get to serve the Lord. I get to care for other people. I, I get to do things that are actually rewarded. I get to, not I got to. Right. And that's a big difference. It's, I mean, it's difference. a whole world of difference of through yeah. that right there. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, thank you so much. And, you know, it just doesn't stop with Ephesians. We have a great study come. You have a great study prepared for us for Mark on this Sunday, 830. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good book. It's yeah. going to be, uh, you're sharing with me this morning a little bit. And so church family, you have to come out for this. It's, it's going to be a good study. It's going to be on Mark chapter, it's chapter, chapter eight, chapter eight. Uh, I'm not going to give any teasers, but just come uh, and uh, hear a, an important question that will be asked. The most important question. Probably in all mankind. The most important question. So yes, come on out, you guys, 8.30, 1045. And men, uh, this Saturday morning, it's still, uh, we still have time to get your conference or teaching tickets only for our men's Super Bowl breakfast. We have a nice crowd coming out. Yeah, it's going to be good. And, Several hundred guys yes, will be there. Yes, and I'm excited. So we're going to have two or more leading us in worship. We're going to have breakfast. We're going to spend time in God's Word. Men, you still have a chance to come on out and purchase a uh, teaching ticket only on Saturday morning. We look forward to having you guys. And Pastor, thank you so much for your time. Of course. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.